One of the most enduring figures in ongoing efforts to decode the experience of television is the medium's tactility. Whether it is a trope of stickiness, massage, jolts, and other body blows, or the effects of a protruding gaze of an eye window frame, potato processing pallum dispensing machine seems moot. The idea of television screen's tactility entered the technological imaginary when Marshall McLuhan theorized TV images as projective tactile promptings. He wrote of the plastic contour of a light through device and the ceaselessly forming contour of things limbed by the scanning finger. That was one of his favorite figures, the scanning finger. Besides the intimation of a coming shift from medium as message to that of massage in the late 1960s, these cryptic remarks in the scanning finger at once evoked the continuous process of scanning, technically called raster scanning, from left to right, across and then down, odd and even lines, by means of electron beams focused and accelerated by the capoid ray gun and its opposite, a note excel ultimately to be directed by the magnetic fields of a steering coil sweeping across the lines of the phosphor-coated mesh and the gestural pointer that follows the final text. The finger that McLuhan gave us could also be taken too literally because, as he clarified, the tactile image involves not so much the touch of skin as the interplay or contact of sense to sense, of touch with sight, with sound, and with movement. The tactility in question was rather synesthetic, tactuality, or as Derek de Kirchhoff once described it, multi-sensory seduction. But the salient point is that the machine stares down the viewer. Moreover, these scanning fingers are being pointed in two directions, from the screen to the retinas of the viewers. Kuma just said, for de Kirchhoff to prime or even radiate it's cold blue light, a light without images, and even contaminate, mesmerize, and transistorize. The TV scanning finger is thought to transmutate those at whom it is pointed, turning them into screens and terminals, mediatizing them so that they may interface and enter into communication. The scanning finger of the TV audience, no longer even permitted to passively vegetate but condemned the labor of participation is loaded with remote control zappers. And further, it has its mind's eye, it's, or rather, sorry, it has its mind's hands full of eyes and glances it continually throws back at the screen. Figures of tactility are creatures of specific junctures in media and communication studies. One version of this argument is that in the transition from a hypodermic to a resonance model of communication in the early 1970s, which was heavily influenced by brain hemisphere research, figures of tactility took a prior place. If the injection of a message through some medium by a sender into a passively waiting blank slate of a receiver could be reconfigured such that each element was less isolated and in fact subject to new combinations emphasizing form and content, and the receiver was less passive and more active, already full of a complex matrix of codes, and hence more actively engaged, then messages could be crafted so as to draw out to some degree those codes, those needs and expectations they would meet upon their reception. Another version is specific to the development of McLuhan's own thought and the turnabout from the analyses of the mechanical bride to those of understanding media as far as the tension between tactility and mechanization are concerned. To put it bluntly, uh, for McLuhan where mechanization was, tactility would be. Which is to say, if the bride of mechanization was pneumatic and vehicular in a world of looking without touching, then the bride of electronic media was barefoot and topless in a world of multi-sensorial tactuality where looking was touching and vice versa.